G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we continue this off-season series uh, going into the new year. Happy New Year, by the way. Where we're coming up with New Year's resolutions for each of the individual AFL clubs. I'm doing all of the 18 in reverse alphabetical order and today I'm up to the Hawthorne Football Club. Uh, if you are a Hawks fan and want to see some more Hawthorne-specific content, I've made a couple of videos on them. Uh, I'm going to make them available in the top right corner of this video. There's a little icon there. I've done the best 22 analysis for 2024 and I've also had a crack at projecting what their best 22 will look like in three years from now. So if you are new to the channel and haven't subscribed, it would mean a lot to me if you did consider doing so. We've had a lot of new viewers to the to the channel over the last month or so. Thousands actually, according to my analytics, uh, but not very many hitting subscribe. So if you are enjoying the content, it would mean a lot to me if you did so. Let's get into this video. So the premise of the video is to talk about our desired outcomes for each of the 18 teams. And so with Hawthorne, the context for them is that uh, they are a side that has kind of, I want to say bottomed out, but they've never actually really plummeted down to the, the depths of, you know, the bottom two at any, any time over the last four years, which we'll talk about later in this video. But nonetheless, it feels like they've drafted well. Uh, they've got a lot of the young kids in their side that are going to be part of the next push. Their side's not completely rebuilt. There's a couple of list spots they probably need to address, as I've talked about in other, other videos, and I'll elaborate on shortly as well. But once again, being such a young side and, and Sam Mitchell being in his second year as senior coach, it does feel like there's still not a whole lot of pressure on their performance, but nonetheless, I found eight things that I'll go through in this video where I think they'll aim to achieve those little things for the 2024 season. So let's crack into specifics. The first one is probably just leveling out a little bit more consistency of performance. So the, the gap between Hawthorne's best and worst was pretty significant this year, as you'd expect with the young sides. However, naturally, one thing they want to try and rectify is the massive gap between their best and the worst. So at their best, they beat the two best sides of the competition this year, both times at the MCG. Collingwood and the Brisbane Lions. They also had two other wins against St Kilda, who uh, made the finals, got a home final, and the Bulldogs, who probably should have made finals if they didn't sort of drop away towards the end of the year. But a quality side nonetheless. So the Hawks showed that on their day, um, they can match it with some of the better teams in the comp for sure. In fact, beat them. Uh, but we saw also a real inconsistency of performance. So I am kind of repeating what I've said in a previous video here, but I'll point out once again that the week after Hawthorne beat St Kilda, a pretty good side in 2023, they conceded 16 goals and a half to Port Adelaide. So naturally, a young side is going to be inconsistent for sure, but that is still a pretty massive swing in terms of what their best is and what their worst is. Similarly, again, I'll point to their round 13 win over the Brisbane Lions, uh, where the following week they then lost to the Gold Coast Suns by 67 points. Now, we do know from evidence they were a lot better than the bottom two teams this year in uh, North Melbourne and West Coast. And, and that was evidenced by, I think it was in round 10, when they smashed the Eagles by 116 points. And that game should, on paper, have been a lot more even. Maybe not on paper, but it's certainly in terms of pre-game expectations. Uh, bottom line being, Hawthorne really did demonstrate that they are nowhere near being a genuine struggling club at the moment, and they look like they're on the rise. So this year, if they can tighten up the gap between their best and the worst, it could translate to, obviously, a higher position on the ladder. Uh, let's talk about Mitch Lewis. This will be their second resolution here. And the, the simple resolution here is just getting fit enough to play an entire season because uh, the output we've seen from Lewis when he's playing at AFL level is to a very, very high standard. He only played 15 games last year. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't think he's played more than that in a single given season. Yet he still kicked 36 goals. And if you extrapolate that, we're looking at a guy who can kick 50 to 60 goals in a season on current form. I think Mitch Lewis, as a, as a bit of a young gun key forward of the comp, will form an important part of their next finals and premiership push as well. So getting him fit of and by itself would actually probably translate in more wins again in 2024. The third resolution is around the other end of the ground and that is finding a reliable key back mix. This is, this is the one part of the ground I don't think Hawthorne are, are, are completely settled yet in terms of their best mix going forward. I think their midfield they've drafted really well for. You can kind of get a feel for which guys are going to take them to the next level. And we'll talk about their forward line uh, shortly as well, but that, that looks very dangerous. But the back line, specifically the tolls around James Sicily is the one area we're not too sure about yet. So specifically, we're probably going to see a bit of James Blank. He played 15 games last year. Uh, Sam Frost as well at 31. I think he'll turn next year. Uh, he played 18 games. And it, James Sicily is obviously one of the best defenders in the competition, but finding a partner for him, or at least someone who can lift their game to sort of bridge the gap between Sicily and the next best tall defender, that would be a big win for them this year. And they have drafted that position with Will, Will McKay, but uh, obviously he's going to be a few years off probably cracking this team given he is a teenage tall prospect. So I guess the way to extend that resolution is if they don't find a mix that they're happy with this year, it may be a case of recruiting a key defender. The next resolution will be to uh, consider the development of 
Josh Weddle uh, in particular. See, I'd like to see a little bit more midfield exposure for him in his second year. So he had a really successful first year. Um, he's a name that will stick out to many because Hawthorne did a fairly daring live trade for him at the 2022 draft to take him in the first round, which was a little bit earlier than people were expecting. And nonetheless, he kind of hit the ground running in his first year. He played 17 games. He averaged 17 and a half disposals, five marks a game. And I think he won the route rising star nomination against West Coast where he had 28 touches and two goals. And at 192 centimeters and 92 kilos, and uh, I'm informed he's a very good runner as well. He's very ready-made for his age, uh, considering. So maybe a transition or, or perhaps it's not critical that he, he spends large periods of the game on ball in his second season, but to have one eye on the future and give him a little bit of exposure at stoppages or increased exposure rather, I think that's definitely something Hawthorne will look to consider in 2024. The next one is around Denver Granger Barras, a former uh, high draft pick. It was pick five or six, I think, in the 2020 draft, who has played 28 games and has really kind of struggled to lock down and uh, exactly what his role is. And from my understanding, you know, drafted as a key defender, but while playing for Box Hill was moved from the back half to the forward half and uh, apparently kicked nine goals across two games, which eventually triggered this notion that uh, Denver Granger Barras might actually be developed as a forward going forward. He played seven games this year and kicked four goals at AFL level. So obviously not much of a sample size there. So his development will be an interesting one, especially for a kid that was taken fairly high in the draft. They sunk some draft capital into that naturally. And we saw him recall to the AFL side later in the year and play predominantly as a forward. Now, this one will be an interesting one because considering Hawthorne's new look forward line, it might be tricky for Granger Brass to really crack a game and arguably their need now is greater for a key defender. So I, um, I'm interested to see what Hawks fans think about where to play Granger Brass. If he's got talent as a forward, I know they've just lost Kaczynski, but then they've taken uh, Mabi or Chol. Either way, the point of my resolution is find a role that is right for Granger Brass and then let him battle for that spot on the side. So let's talk about this new look forward line for Hawthorne, specifically the new players that are going to be available. So Jack Gunson has rejoined the club from the Brisbane Lions after one year. Jack Ginnivan has uh, famously requested a trade from Collingwood. And he got there as well. Nick Watson was taken with pick five in the in the 2023 draft. You'd imagine he's not too far away from the side by round one. And Marby Ochoa as well uh, as a kind of another tall option for them there. And that goes in addition to some of the names I've already got there. We talked about Mitch Lewis. They got Luke Bruce in that team. Uh, Dylan Moore also was uh, has become a very good player. So the resolution here is getting these guys to work as a mix because we've got a whole stack of players there who I'd imagine are going to play pretty early. I, I'd, I'd lock in Gunston, probably Ginevan. I'd be pretty confident about Watson too, and I think Chol might even find his way in there. But again, I'll uh, defer to the Hawks fans' comments to let me know what their thoughts are as well. But either way, diversifying their scoring options was something I think Hawthorne needed to do. But looking at the stats here, uh, Dylan Moore kicked 17 goals last year and was actually top three in their goal kicking as more of a high half forward uh, player anyway. So they've got some genuine goal scoring talent in this side now, which I think could really take them to the next level. So the resolution is find a mix, find a method that is able to get this forward line cranking as early as possible. The next one is broadly just about how many games we expect Hawthorne to win in 2024. So over the last four years, they've kind of lingered around the same sort of win tally. Like I said, they've never really bottomed out really hard. In 2020, they won five games, but since then they've gone seven wins, eight wins, seven wins, and their percentage fluctuating around about the 80 to 89% mark. The fact that they've been able to stabilize and keep a win-loss ratio around that level, considering the amount of experience they sort of offloaded. Admittedly, they got Gunston back, but you know, Jago Romero, Tom Mitchell. Like I said in another video, the fact that they dropped 9% and won one less game, it was still a very productive year last year. So I think now we're probably at the point where Hawthorne will be aiming to just break past that eight win uh, threshold and, and show some real improvement. Again, that's not to suggest they haven't improved. They just said the opposite. But they have been lingering around the same sort of game tally, same sort of percentage mark for the last few years. It'd be nice to see some empirical improvement in 2024. The next point is probably just around their ball movement. Now, this one isn't so much a comment from the eye test. It was actually just a statistical thing that I picked up. There was a second ranked side for total disposals this year. Only one other side got more of the football or disposed of the football more often than Hawthorne this year. Yet, they ranked 16th in the league for points scored and 14th for inside 50. So obviously, that statistic suggests that they're kind of overusing the footy. Now, like I said, I think these things will be rectified somewhat by the fact that they've got a whole brand new forward line and their midfielders will develop even further again in 2024 with a whole host of young, talented midfielders there. But that was one thing I picked up. Rectifying that stat a little would go a long way. And finally, the last one is probably to secure a mature age player again 
uh, in the 2024 offseason. Like I said, I kind of alluded to the idea that it may need to add another key position defender. Uh, I kind of had a little bit of a look at who's out of contract next year, and no one, no one's a real top liner that, that's uh, potentially going to move, but there could be some money ball options in guys like Caleb Marchbank, dare I say it, Dougal Howard, Tom Cleary, Jed Busling is probably the most talented one that is technically out of contract from the Western Bulldogs. So maybe Hawthorne just have a little sniff around that to build a little bit of depth if they're not confident around their key position defensive options right now. I'd probably also go to the draft. I know they've got Will McCabe and Sicily isn't close to the end of his career, but I do think that part of the, the ground needs reinforcing and they missed out on Daniel Curtin. I believe they were sort of trying to potentially manufacture a live trade after they'd taken Nick Watson. But either way, that's just one thing that I think the Hawks could look at from a list management point of view is another tall defender. And then of course, I'll throw into the mix as well, Bailey Smith. And there's a chance that Bailey Smith is going to lead the Western Bulldogs at the end of the year. I believe John Ralph even suggested it would be 80%. A lot can change between then and now. Uh, but I believe that uh, Bailey Smith was a Hawks fan growing up and he's obviously chasing a few more midfield minutes. Now, the midfield isn't particularly a part of the ground where I think the Hawks really need reinforcing, but nonetheless, he would improve that side and add a real dynamic edge to what is already a good young midfield. It does seem like the leading contenders are Geelong and Hawthorne, whilst Collingwood is also in the mix there. So that one's a wait and see, but I'd be intrigued to see if uh, they can prize Bailey Smith loose. But anyway, guys, those are just a few thoughts on the Hawthorne Football Club. Let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. I know that we uh, we have a lot of Hawthorne fans, actually, that support the True Footy YouTube channel. So I appreciate you, and I'm, I'm keen to hear what you have to say about resolutions for next year. And of course, throw some at me that uh, I didn't consider in this video. But anyway, I'll thank you for watching the video. I thank you for supporting the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.